Hello friends, welcome back to tutorials in English literature. In today's video, I shall discuss the plot of Act Two of William Congreve's famous creation, The Way of the World. In the last video, I have discussed that the plot of Act One is set in a chocolate house, and there we were introduced. With the character of Mirabel, Mr. Fainall, Witoot, Petulant, these four characters, four main characters, with whom we were introduced in the first act. In the second act, which is set mainly in the Saint James Park. we will be introduced with three important female characters mrs marut mrs fenal and milament apart from them the three servants fiable waitwell and mincing will also be introduced with us the last two scenes of this act are set in rosamond pond which is near the saint james park so the play opens here in the saint james park and we find in the stage the two so called friends who are actually enemy mrs marut and mrs fenner they discuss about love and men Mrs Fenal declares that she hates men and she believes that every woman should spurn should reject the love of man because it is temporary but Mrs Marut suggests that women would not last long women will not be live long if they try to restrain their lust their sexual desires they should enjoy their youth they should try to enjoy the pleasure with men this philosophy of mrs marut surprises mrs fenner because it is completely in contrast with the anti men agenda of lady with forts cabal mrs marut is a member of that cabal but she is now expressing a very opposite philosophy so mrs marut accepts the charge and she admits that she has behaved like an like a hypocrite and mrs marut also request mrs fenner to accept the fact to admit the fact that she also loves men but mrs fenner says that she hates men and she is surprised that mrs fenner has behaved falsely has pretended only to appease her mother lady wisfort questioning mrs fenner again and again mrs marut also derives an important information that she really hates mr fenner her husband then mrs marut changes her stance she says that she actually hates men like mrs fenner she is only testing her whether she is dependable or not she that means mrs marut says that she hates men so much that she even wishes to conduct an experiment in which she will marry a man and then 
makes her husband to believe that she is carrying on an affair so by only pretending to be cuckolding her husband she can be pleased that her husband is perpetually jealous for her then mrs fainal says that then she wishes that mrs maru would have married mirabel and that comment brings blushes in mrs maru's cheeks and she says loudly if it were so then mrs fainal points out that mrs maru must be in love with mirabel her body is betraying her her body is expressing her internal desires but mrs maru denies the fact and she says that the same kind of change can be found in mrs fenal also at that time mrs fenal finds that mirabel and fenal are approaching towards them and she changes the topic and she says that she is now feeling sick because she has found her husband so here the first scene of the second act ends in the second scene we find fenal and mirabel arrive before them and fenal appears here a really a very hypocrite he is pretending here as an ideal husband he is wearing here the mask of social fakeet the proper etiquette and he is calling his wife as my dear and she is replying as my soul so this is the sorry reality of restoration aristocratic society that husband and wife are enemy of each other they are indifferent to each other but in public they behaved like ideal lovers so after that mrs fenal expresses her wish to work with mirabel and to continue the talk that was going on yesterday at the cabal party of mrs wishford before mirabel was asked to leave the party and then mirabel and mrs fenal leaves mrs marut and fenal they now begin their discussion and here the second scene ends here i want to tell you one thing that the title mrs is a common title in restoration age for married or unmarried women so mrs fenal is married to mr fenal but mrs marut is an unmarried woman so after that the third scene opens the th in the third scene we find mrs marut and mr fenal the two lovers and this scene is a long scene and a very important scene because it brings out the wit the intellect the jealous nature the cruelty of mr fenal and at the same time this scene also brings out how manipulative mrs marut can be how great liar she is so they are really made for each other both are betraying each other they are lovers but both are betraying each other and mr fenol is also betraying his wife so when the scene begins we find that mrs maru is not interested to pass time with mr fenol she is insisting mr fenol to follow mirabel and mrs fenol already in the first act we have found that a suspicion 
was born in the mind of Mr. Fina that perhaps Marut, Mrs. Marut, loves Mirabel. When Mirabel told him that it is Mrs. Marut who destroyed his hope to marry Milamant. Now Mr. Feno wants to know the motive. Why did Mrs. Marut destroy Mirabel's hope to marry Milamant? So when she proposes to follow Mirabel and Mrs. Feno, Mr. Feno says that why Mrs. Marut wants to follow them? Is he jealous? Is she jealous of Mirabel? Then Mrs. Marut wants to hide her interest in Mirabel. She says that she is only trying to protect the owner of Mr. Fennel because she believes that Mr. Fennel wife, Mrs. Fennel is in a love relationship with Mirabel. Okay, so she herself is in an extramarital affair but she wants to protect the owner of Mr. Fennel. Such an irony here. Uh, after that, she uh, says that Fennel's wife is deceiving him. Then Fennel says that he can sense that he is being deceived, but that is by Mrs. Marut. Fennel brings the charge that Mrs. Marut is pretending to hate Mirabel. Actually, she is dissembling, she is uh, making fool Mr. Fennel. At that enrages Mrs. Marut. Mr. Fennel now says that uh, he believes Mirabel also loves Mrs. Marut. And that brings again the blushes in Mrs. Marut's cheeks. Then Mr. Fennel sighs like Mrs. Fennel, the blushes in her cheeks and her sparkling eyes as soon as the name of Mirabel is pronounced. So again Mrs. Marut denies all these charges. And she again says that it is not she but Mrs. Fennel is betraying Mr. Fennel. Then Mrs. Uh, Mr. Fennel says that uh, he knows about Mrs. Fennel's affair with Mirabel. But he is indifferent to her and it is good for him that his wife is occupied with Mirabel because that allows him to spend time with Mrs. Marut peacefully without being suspected. Then Mr. Fainal rebukes Mrs. Marut that she should not believe it that he will be indifferent to his lovers that means Mrs. Marut's treachery also as he is indifferent to his wife's treachery. Then Mrs. Marut wants to know what Mr. Fennel is complaining against her. Then Mr. Fennel tells her very clearly that he believes that Mrs. Marut is in love with Mirabel and she is betraying him and her hatred for Mirabel is only a fake it. Mr. Fennel says that he now believes that Mrs. Marut hates Mirabel only because Mirabel is indifferent to her advancement, to her love. And that is why Mrs. Marut has destroyed, has interfered in the relationship between Mirabel and Milamant. There are no other motive possible. 
then Mrs. Maru retorts that it is nothing but her obligation as a friend of Lady Wisford that leads her to tell Lady Wisford about Mirabel's real intention. She cannot put up with Mirabel's toying with Lady Wisford. So then Mr. Fennel mocks the professed friendship between Mrs. Marut and Lady Wisford. We can also understand that Mrs. Marut declares herself as the best friend of Lady Wisford. But she is carrying on an affair with her daughter's husband. So after Mr. Fenor's charge, Mrs. Marut says that the female friendship is much better than the vain and empty words of men to their lovers or to their friends. Then very brilliantly Mr. Fenner points out that Mrs. Fenner, who is Mrs. Marut's friend, has been befooled by Mrs. Marut. Mrs. Marut is betraying her own female friend, Mrs. Fenner. What kind of friendship is it? Then Mrs. Marut says that now Mr. Fennel should realize how much she is sacrificing for him. And she also points out that it is Mr. Fennel's sense of guilt that makes him angry. Mrs. Marut then angrily says that she will expose herself as an adulterous before the public. She will tell everybody about her affair with Mr. Fenner than to tolerate such insult, such torture from Mr. Fenner. So that change stance of Mrs. Marut surprises Mr. Fenner and he says that he has protected her fame and he has used her fortune for the pleasure that they both have enjoyed. And if Mrs. Maru would not have been a betrayer, would not been untrue to him, then he would have paid all her expenses. He also add that if Mrs. Marut would not have been intervened and Milamant and Mirabel would have married without Lady Wisford's consent, that would make Lady Wisford so upset that she would disinherit Milamant from her fortune. And then that fortune would have gone to Mrs. Fenner and Mr. Fenner would get access to that money. And then he can spend that money, that large sum of money for Mrs. Marut. But Mrs. Marut doesn't believe in this. And she wants to leave now. She wants to end the relationship. So now Mr. Fennel requests her to stop and holds her hand. But Mrs. Marut is now in a completely different mood. She is really a very good actor and she says that Mr. Fennel can break her hand because she would go to that length to leave him and then very emotionally, Mr. Fennel asks her if there is not anything other than the physical power of Mr. Fennel that can hold Mrs. Marut. And then Mr. Fennel takes all the blames on him 
and says that he will not insult, will not suspect Mrs. Marud in this way again. And he will betray his wife, he will steal all her money and he will run away with Mrs. Marut and live in different place with her happily. But Mrs. Marut is still crying, sobbing and at that time they discover Mirabel and Mrs. Fennel are approaching toward them. Then Mr. Fennel requests her to compose herself and to use the mask that she has with her and then they leave the place in another way. So the mask that Mrs. Marut wears at the end of this scene suggests her social ticket, her hypocrisy. And they are another way, they are different way from Mirabel and Mrs. Fainan suggests their way in the play will be different from Mirabel and Mrs. Fainan. So here the third scene ends and it brings out the real nature, the true character of the two antagonists of the play, Mrs. Marut and Mr. Fainan. At the beginning of the scene 4 of the second act, we find that Mrs. Fenner and Mirabel notice Mrs. Marut and Mr. Fenner who are now leaving that place in a different way. Mrs. Fenner comments that she now despises Mr. Fenner and she cannot even tolerate the side of that man. Then Mirabel advises her to hate that man with a limit. Then Mrs. Fennel wants to know why Mirabel is trying to impose a limit on her hatred when Mirabel himself is the reason for her hatred to her husband. She still loves Mirabel and that is why she hates Mr. Fingal. She even very pity, very uh, pathetically asks Mirabel why Mirabel has made her married to that man. Then Mirabel replies that if Mrs. Fainer have got pregnant when they were carrying on the affair, then it would be very difficult to find a father for her child and no man would have been ready to marry a pregnant widow. So this brings out the pathetic condition, the wretched condition of a rich woman in Restoration England. Mrs. Fainer was in a relationship with Mirabel when she was a widow. So that cannot be regarded as an immoral affair. But Mirabel does not love him at that time. Mirabel likes her but Mirabel is not ready to marry her. And Congreve has not explained why Mirabel was not ready to marry Mrs. Fenner. But at least we can understand the wretched condition of the women in Restoration England. So after that, Mirabel explains that he wants a special type of man and he finds that type of man in Mr. Fennel. Mr. Fennel 
seems to be a good man but not really a good man and mirabel says that he did not want to sacrifice a really good man for mrs fainer he also did not want a man who is known for his bad reputation to be the husband of his former lover and so he selected mr fainer as the husband of mrs fainer and he also tells mrs fainer that he has the remedy when mrs fainer would be tired of mr fainer and it brings out the scheme the plan of mirabel that mirabel is a great schemer he can plot very well and he has already planned a solution for mrs fainer and then mirabel tries to soothe mrs fainer by showing his trust in her and he is now ready to tell her his whole plan to marry milamant and in this way mrs fainer will have the power either to advance or to destroy mirabel's plan to marry milamant mirabel explains before mrs fainer that the fictitious uncle of mirabel sir roland will who will be visiting mrs wisford's house is a creation of mirabel himself this role will be played by his servant waitwell and for that reason he had planned a secret marriage between waitwell and lady wisford servants foible because mirabel is afraid that waitwell may try to double cross him waitwell may try to marry lady wisford and even lady wisford may try to marry sir roland to disinherit mirabel from the property and mrs feno says that in the cabal night she has also heard that sir roland has been chosen as the would be husband of milamant and then mirabel tells mrs feno that this is also a part of the plan so now we can realize that in the first act in the chocolate house when we believe that mirabel is in a bad position mirabel speaks to mirabel's uncle sir roland has arrived to marry milamant all these are plan of mirabel and mirabel is listening everything very carefully not in fear but he is just checking whether every plan of him is are uh, is going in the right direction or not so here is uh, a play within play is going on here and everything is under the scheme under the plan of mirabel the lady who sports uh, comments that mirabel's plan appears to be a very good plan and probably it will work she also get comfort that the marriage certificate of lady wisford and foible would not allow marry would not allow wait wait to marry lady wisford because in that case the marriage will be proved invalid so that is a great comfort for mrs fainer and mirabel says that lady wisford now has to consent to milamant's marriage with mirabel to save herself from the scandal of an affair with the servant of mirabel okay so a great scheme of mirabel has started to work 
and Mrs. Penham also thinks that this plan will work because her mother can do anything to get a husband. And Mirabel also says that she is such a woman, she is such a woman that she is ready to marry anything that resembles a man. And it also brings out the hypocrisy of Lady Wisford. Her cabal, the philosophy of the cabal, the anti-man attitude are nothing but the expression of her depression, of her depression of singleness, that she has lost her youth and she has no lover. In reality, she is a man hunter. So here, the fourth scene of the second act ends. In the next scene, act two, scene five, our heroine Minamant enters into the stage for the first time. Mirabel and Mrs. Fennell notice that Milament is coming towards them and she is accompanied by her servant Mincing and Wetut. When Mirabel comments that today Milament's followers are only one in number and in general she is always surrounded by beautiful male admirers. Then we would starts to reply, and we find that we would is unstoppable. It is very difficult to stop the nonsense talking, the foolish talking of we would, and we would uh, disturbs milament and milament. Then, for a long time, we toots nonsense talking going on. And after that, when Mrs. Penal asks Milaman why she is late coming, uh, Milaman's servant, Min Singh, replies that Milaman was busy in reading a packet of letters. She has received a packet of letters from her lovers, different lovers, male admirers, and she was busy in going through these letters. Then Milament accepts that this is true, but she says that she hates receiving so many letters every day, and she uses those letters to curl her hair, and she only uses the letters written in poetry because it's uh, it helps to curl her hair perfectly. So here is a nice touch of humor from Congreve. For a long time, Milament consciously ignores Mirabel and does not talk with him. Then Milament talks with Mirabel and Mirabel asks Milament, whether she felt sorry or not when Mirabel was asked to leave Lady Wisford's cabal last night. At first, Milament wants to say that she felt sorry for Mirabel, but then she changes her mind and she says that she felt happy that she also asked Mirabel to leave. Then she apologizes before Mirabel that she loves to give other people pain and she thinks that, she believes that it is her power to give others pain. That means her cruelty that actually give her power and without that power she will be vain and old and ugly. Then Mirabel comments that this is not the true nature of Milament. Mirabel knows Milament and Mirabel knows that Milament doesn't like to be a cruel woman. And Mirabel also says that it is because of that power she will lose the object of her power. That means her lover. 
and without her lover she will lose her beauty she will no more be handsome she will lose her beauty in an instant because it is the lovers that make a woman beautiful even if a lover praises an old woman flatters up an old woman she also starts to discover her beautiful features milamant rejects mirabel's philosophy that a lover makes a woman beautiful and not the mirror milamant says that a woman is flattered only when she is beautiful otherwise a lover will not flatter a woman and second point is that a woman a beautiful woman can choose can replace a new love an old lover with a new lover any day any time and a beautiful woman has that power and for that reason she believes that a man whose each weight to an ego as a woman whose her beauty to a lover that means a woman is not dependent for her beauty on a lover and she says that a lover and his flattery are nothing but ego that means vain and insubstantial then mirabel comments that a woman's pleasure depend on this ego this lover and its flattery without this a woman cannot be happy so in that way their argument goes on and we find that they both are brilliantly witty they both are intellectual and at the same time mirabel knows the soft heart the soft nature the generous nature of milamant that milamant tries to hide through a fake of a cruel indifferent woman so at the beginning of the sixth scene act 2 scene 6 mrs fainal departs with wedel to give milamant and milamant some scope to talk in private in this scene mincing is totally ignored and she has no dialogue to speak so mirabel first asks milamant if she had not sensed that mirabel wanted to talk something secret with her at the cabin last night then milamant says that mirabel must have observed that she was busy she was engaged with her friends with her admirers then mirabel retorts that milamant was doing nothing but entertaining a horde of fools and it is actually against the fame of milamant that she was entertaining a horde of fools then milamant says that she sometimes does this because it is good for her health then mirabel humorously asks her whether there there is any disease which is worse than this for which a treatment like something this is needed then milamant says that she finds it that they are always disagree in every matter and for that reason she believes that they will soon be weary be tired of each other and their relationship will end and for that reason she says that they should stop their relationship their love affair and she also tells mirabel that she does not like to be instructed she does not like to be reprimanded 
she also finds it dull to follow others instruction and she finds it a very difficult but to hear her thoughts from other people and that is why she wants to break their relationship and in this way she breaks up their relationship and smiles so now mirabel becomes very grave and serious and he says that a man can make a friend with his wit and fortune with his honesty and can win a woman with his plain dealing and sincerity again mirabel laughs at his face and says that mirabel is looking as serious as king solomon when he ordered to cut the child in two halves to give it to two women so again mirabel requests her to be serious so that he can share with her his secret plan then mirabel discloses that it is possibly mirabel's plan to marry Fargo with wait wait and the plan of Sir Roland Mirabel is extremely surprised he is shocked when he comes to know that Mirabel is already aware of his secret plan he now wants to know the source of her knowledge Mirabel replies that either she herself comes to know of it or she gets the help of Fargo So she is playful as ever, and she leaves the stage, taking Mincing to meet Waitwell and Mrs. Marwood. And Mirabel gets no chance for further inquiry. So here the sixth scene of Act Two ends. At the beginning of the next scene, that means Act Two, Scene Seven, we find Mirabel alone on the stage. He is now pondering over the. the conversation that was going on between him and his beloved milamet he is completely puzzled and she feels that even a whirlwind is more constant than milamet he also feels that love is nothing but craziness and more than that when a man loves a strong willed independent woman like milamet then his life become full of pains but still man loves at that time mirabel notices the newly married couple waitwell and firewell and he begins to talk with them jokingly and here the scene 7 of act 2 ends in the act 2 scene 8 we find that mirabel meets with uh, firewell and waitwell at rosamond park and it was 1 o'clock now the newly married couple are very happy and grateful to mirabel and mirabel congratulates them after some uh, jokes firewell comes to the main point of discussion and he informs mirabel that she promised her lady that means lady whisport to bring a picture of mirabel's fake uncle sir roland and she had also planned to tell her lady that sir roland was so pleased with lady whisport's picture that he burns with impatience to meet her so mirabel praises her plan her quick wit then firewell tells mirabel that she has disclosed this secret plan to milamet because she fears that mirabel will be unable to find a place a time to talk in private with milamet because milamet is always surrounded with her male admirers and that is why she has already told milamet everything about this 
fan and this also makes mirabel happy so now uh, fiber wants to know about the further instruction and at that time c feels that c has spotted mrs marut behind a mask and she feels that it is a very dangerous thing because mrs marut perhaps also spotted her with mirabel who is an enemy of her lady <clears throat> and so she returns home as soon as possible so that she can tell a lie a fabricated story to wish for before mrs marut can tell everything to lady wishford so here the act to scene 8 ends in the act to scene 9 which is the last scene of this act we find mirabel and wedwell on the stage foible left them at the end of the scene 8 so uh, now wedwell promises that he will perform the role of sir roland so convincingly that he will even forget his own identity wedwell suddenly realizes that even if he stop pretending sir roland he will not be same wedwell again because he is he is now newly married and a married man is never a man of his own a married man loses his freedom so here wedwell's philosophy is quite similar with mr fainer's philosophy that we find in act 1 so here the second act of congress the way of the world ends if you find this detailed discussion of summary helpful please show some love in form of thumbs up and if you find this kind of video interesting and useful i request you to subscribe to this channel thank you